Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Isle to Sturmovik. Uh, the Free French Iron Man campaign, where uh, it's the 23rd of September, 1944. At Derna. Apparently that's how you pronounce it. I've finally been informed that it's pronounced Derna. That's the place we're at right now, not Dern, not Dern, it's Derna. So that's that little mystery solved. Um, two days remain of Operation Market Garden, at least if I recall correctly. Sorry, I just bumped my microphone. I don't know if that was audible on the video. I apologize if it was. Anyway, approximately two days remain of Market Garden. And if Gaston can survive that long, he'll get some much owed, much earned rest for a while. Um... I'm going to give him that leave that uh, he was owed from when he got injured. And then I screwed everything up by messing around with the uh, campaign generator. Um, but he's got to survive that long. That's that's the important part. Um, so, let's generate a new mission. What are we sat on right now? 17 victories. I still haven't updated his skin, actually, since I originally did it. I think maybe I should at some point to add the extra little crosses on the side, but not not just yet. Maybe once he hits 20, if he hits 20. Uh, mission. Generate a mission. Monsieur. It's not how you pronounce that at all. Monsieur. I'm speaking franglais today. Monsieur. Bonjour. Fill in the dead air while it loads a mission for... Go oh my god, I haven't I haven't used... Well, it's been a little bit of a break between this episode and the last one in terms of when I recorded it, and I forgot how frickin' slow Pat Wilson's campaign generator is. I was about to say, did I actually click the button correctly? No, apparently I did. It just takes ages. <sighs> okay. Ooh! Are we doing ground attack? Primary objective, attack enemy armor near Nijmegen. Oh yeah, and that's also pronounced Nijmegen, not Nijmegen. Got that wrong too. Um, attack enemy armor near Nijmegen. Right. So we're, we're going to be attacking tanks. So, in that case, uh, we're bringing Henri Petit with us. Ah, oh, awesome. Me and Henri going out to blow up some tanks. I like the sound of that. Uh, I don't know if I want to take just two of us, though. Three or four, at least, I think. Anything less than that's probably asking for trouble. Let's have a look at the map, though. I've been hoping we might get another ground attack mission, because as, as was pointed out correctly in the comments, if we get a ground attack mission, what we can do is we can just give the other guys in the squadron Mark IX Spitfires... And those should hopefully load in with the bombs. Um, and therefore we can do the mission properly. You know, assuming the game actually gives us some targets. Um, you know, so we'll see. Of course, um, I know it was a whole thing in Market Garden that they were supposed to have close air support, but the radios didn't work. Um, so they weren't, act weren't actually able to communicate with the Allied aircraft, um, the guys on the ground. Although, I don't know if that was actually at Nijmegen or if that was an Arnhem-specific thing with the British. Um, it's been a while since I've read up on the subject, to be honest with you, but I know that that, 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 that lack of communication was a thing. Because, um, of course, previously we've had that we had that, that screw-up where we attacked a friendly anti-air position thinking it was a German one due to, presumably, that exact same lack of communication. Um... Anyway, looks like the Dakota's going to be dropping supplies again, judging by this on the side here. So we're going to fly in. Oh, this, is where, this is the bit where I might want to start considering moving waypoints around. So ingress, target approach, target. That's such a weird... Why would you go that way like that? That doesn't make an awful lot of sense to me. Looks like the Germans are pushing this way. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, okay, right, this is nonsense. Right, we're gonna move this like, like here. I see target is, target final. 
Oh, am I not allowed to move target final? Aha. Uh -huh. Alright, fine. We'll just make this a little bit less offensive looking. Um, a little bit more reasonable. There we go. Ingress. Target approach. Target final. Target. And then the target egress is for some reason that way. Uh, let's do that instead. That makes a heck of a lot more sense. Alright. That works for me. That's a bit more reasonable. We'll get a better look at the target area once we're actually in-game. And we're using the in-game map. For now, though, uh, let's go to the waypoint screen. Uh, our altitude is going to be very low. Uh, that's fine. Pilots. This is the bit I want to tweak as well. Yeah, Gaston and Henri. Uh, I would also like to bring a couple of other chaps along as well. Let's bring on the guy with the interesting Greek name. Hippolyta. And let's bring along Maurice as well. Why not? There we go. Um, oh. Yeah, we're going to have to give you guys all Mark 9s, which is a bit weird and annoying, but it's just a quirk of the game, I'm afraid. Because you won't have any bombs if I don't give you a Mark 9. Right, there we go. A pair of 250 kilogram bombs. Or one 500 kilogram bomb. I feel like one 500 kilogram bomb might be a better choice. Or maybe even the rockets, actually. But it's only two rockets, isn't it? It's not very much. I think, you know what? I think we should give you guys the 500 kilo bombs. I feel like they stand a better chance of killing something with a big. 500 kilo blast than with two little 250s if I'm honest um, and I'm going to give us the same actually as well uh, let's see anything else I want to do with you guys might as well just leave all this alone I suppose um, I'll have to reset this in game anyway once I, once I get in there because of the lovely little bug we've encountered with the Spitfire Mark 14 but whatever um, hopefully, the settings should save for the other guys, at least, if nothing else. So, cool. Accept mission. Is it going to do it? It's sort of sitting there. It's getting a spinny wheel of death. There we go. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you in the sim. All right, here we are. Let's take a closer look at this, then. So, we're expecting the enemy armor to be just to the right of the river here as it bends southwards um, as we see this this tributary that goes off that way um, it's just before that so if we pass this we know we've gone too far this also looks like there's a little lake and a couple of ponds or something next to it as well and it's just past a railway line as well a road and a railway line and two bridges here the the two bridges at Nijmegen actually the road bridge and the and the railway bridge, um, I think I think one or both of these was blown up by the Germans if I recall and they they had to the Allies had to construct a brand new Bra Bailey bridge to get across it, um, which only further slowed down their advance towards the north, towards Arnhem, but uh, if 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 the if the mission is correct and let's face it it wasn't last time. Um, we should find the German panzers around there somewhere. So those will be members of the, I forget which ones they were, but members of the SS panzer divisions that so infamously caused trouble for the Allies during the operation. Um, and yeah, according to this big old arrow here, it looks like they'll be pushing down this way. So um, I don't know how, I don't know how um, precise this target mark bullseye is going to be, you know. Um, it could be that they're right there. It could be uh, the game's way of sort of indicating, actually, you should search this general area for the enemy tanks, in which case, if, you know, if you don't see anything right on the spot, I guess we'll have to orbit around a bit and see if we can actually see some tanks down there. And hopefully we won't get harassed by German fighters while we're trying to do that, because that would be a real pain. That would be a real pain. At least I'm in charge on this particular mission, which means that uh, I can, you know, try try and... I mean, it's a bit like herding cats at times, but sometimes I could try and exercise a bit of control over what the squadron is doing, so... Um, right. Well, 
I'm just sort of, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm tilting my head sideways right now to try and get a view of it as we'll see it coming towards it. As assuming I actually choose to follow the waypoints, of course, I might not actually. I might sort of get to around here-ish and then just go straight north. Probably it'll be a much easier way of finding the target, actually, if I come at it directly from the south. We use Cluis here as a, as a, this aerodrome here as a, as a, as a landmark to line us up with it. If we go directly north of that, we'll be bang on, pretty much. Yeah, I might do that, considering I'm in charge. So, yeah, okay then. Anyway, uh, I've got to set up everything here again, as usual. No, we don't want to mess around with that. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah, it's in custom, isn't it? Gaston, there we go. And then we need to, I think, pretty much just unselect and reselect this. Wait a minute, can I have the, the 500 pounder and the 250s? Turns out I can. I'm going to do that. Right. Uh, we'll have that. E-type wing, mirror, gyro gun sight. Jolly good. All of the bombs. Can't guarantee any of them are going to land remotely on target, but I will try my best. Uh, the bomb timer is on one second, so hopefully, you know, we won't get blown up by our own bomb blast if we drop at low altitude, which is always good. Um, yeah, gun convergence is set as I want it, although it does make me wonder sometimes if, you know, none of this other stuff set saves properly, then maybe the gun convergence doesn't either. But whatever. Okay, right. Let's get ready to go. Okie dokie, been a little while since I've flown. I'm trying to remember my controls at the moment. Okay, right. Um, we might be in for a bit of uh, cra crash on takeoff uh, blooper reel footage here, actually, for a second, but we'll also see how I get on. I can't remember which direction this thing pushes in. Also, we've apparently already started moving. I didn't authorise that at all. I think that's my, my throttle being a bit weird. Yeah, it does that sometimes. It doesn't idle at the zero position. There we go. Right, we need to set our propeller pitch all the way to maximum. Ready to go, everybody? Let's go. Case of the wobbles there, but we're all right. Oh boy, serious case of the wobbles. Can you tell them a little bit rusty? Also, actually, to be fair, I think my pedals are being particularly uncooperative today. Some of that is not my wiggling, it's me. Pedals just being weird. All right. I'm going to... Bring this down to about 2400 RPM. There we go. Get the plane trimmed out. Okie dokie. Climb 180 miles per hour, it says. I will climb at whatever I damn well please. Thank you very much. Tell you what I'll do. I'll orbit for a bit and let everybody catch up. Although they're doing okay. Although, what's that? What are you doing, dude? Okay, you're already pretty much caught up, to be fair. So, I think any orbiting will be necessary. Sometimes they take ages to catch up. But sometimes they, they don't. It's terribly sort of inconsistent, but anyway. Okay, right. My controls feel weird today. I don't know why... They just feel a bit twitchy. I had some controller issues recently because I was trying to play Elden Ring, actually, and uh, when, when I play Elden Ring, I have to disconnect my pedals and joystick in order for it to work for stupid reasons, because FromSoft apparently can't make a half-decent PC port to save their lives, but anyway, that's a totally different discussion. Um, and I have to plug in Miss. Me, me and my controllers back in. I've had I've had them behave a little bit oddly from time to time. Although I have to admit, I'm not touching the controls at all now. And look, 
I think part of the problem is that it's just really turbulent and windy today. So that's going to be try fun, trying to drop bombs on targets while dealing with this nonsense. Grand. Alright, well. Might as well make a left turn now, I think. Well, ladies and gents, as we make our outbound leg here towards the target near Nijmegen, I shall leave you and rejoin you when something of note begins to happen. Oh, look at me bottoms. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Do you guys have your bottoms? Yes, they do. Hurrah. Okay. We're in business, everybody. All right, I just had my squadron veer off to the left, which is never a good sign. Chaps. Return to our mission, please. We seem to be fine again now. I don't know if that was just a random AI derp moment. But I sort of hope not. Oh look, they're going again. What are you doing, man? Guys. What are you playing at? Turn to the mission. I have no idea what they're doing now. Oop, wrong button. Uh, orders. How about just copy me? <laughs> just shut up a lot of you and follow me. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe that'll do the trick. I don't know. Behaving very oddly. I do hate the lack of communication from your AI teammates in, in, in IL-2. It is probably, if I had one major complaint about about IL-2, aside from the sort of, the ridiculous amount of computer performance that's required to run more than like three flights at the same time, three flights of aircraft I mean, it's that your AI teammates are terrible communicators and I'm not I know I'm not expecting AI brilliance when it comes to communication but you know I've played other flight sims in the past where the AI squadron mates would actually do things like call out bandits when they see them um, you know tell say when they're firing their guns you know tell you when you've got someone on your tail that sort of thing a couple of planes over there I'm, I, I feel like there's a probably C-47s either way whatever they are they're none of our business we have a mission today, we need to get, crack on with it. I don't know if we have any, I don't think we have an escort. Um, unlike the last time we tried to do a ground attack mission. An escort would be handy to watch our backs, but yeah, whatever. What are you going to do, I suppose? Anyway, is that Nijmegen coming up in front of us, or is that somewhere else? I think that's Vagel. Out in front of us there. Uh, what's the... Ah, it's this button here. It's over the big map. Yeah, it's Vagel in front of us. Volk will be on that. And then Nijmegen up that way. Anyway, uh, sorry to interrupt the cruise with a total non-event, but... Uh, yeah. I don't know what those are. Kind of look like they could be the Dakotas, but I don't really... I can't really tell from this distance. They're just sort of vaguely shaped blobs. They're not heading expressly towards us, though, which then therefore makes me inclined to just be like, well, screw them then. They look like maybe at a push they could be JU-88s. Or 110s, maybe. Oh, actually, now that I do look at them... They are 110s. I mean, whatever they are, they're not moving tremendously fast. What's the time? 
I'm not wondering right now. It's the, uh, it's the evening. It's, it's quarter to five. I was wondering why the light was getting a little bit low. Well, goodbye, whoever you are. Don't know what they are. Don't know. Could be Spitfires for all I know, actually. Just taken aback by how slow they were going, mostly. Switch on the cockpit lights. It's getting a bit dingy in here. How <sighs> much further to go? Are we there yet, etc.? Actually, we nearly are, to be honest. Oh, I do love the 3D towns in this game. Look how pretty that is down there with the little buildings and the churches and stuff. It really does look gorgeous. It's not the graphics that slow this game down either. It's it's the AI mostly. You get a lot of... You, the performance is pretty good. If you just do a free flight with no AI and just you, or if you do multiplayer for that matter, performance is much better. Without these lads knocking around. I think, apparently, the reason why it's so demanding on performance is because what most old flight sims used to do was uh, they'd give all the AI planes a much more simplified flight model, which meant that you could have hundreds of the buggers flying flying around all over the place and uh, with it without without destroying your computer, you know, without burning down your CPU, because the, all of their planes had super simplified flight models. But what the hell's this guy up to? Okay. All right. Oh, wrong button again. Orders. Attack this clown. Whoever he is. Uh, this may cause my squadron mates to d ditch their bombs, actually. And really, if I was being sensible, I would too. But I'd rather try and preserve them and get the mission done. Okay, Hippolyta's been hit, apparently. Is this bastard. Not behind me, is he? See a pair of dots over there. Those look like they're probably C 47s, though. Hello, boys. You see the guy? Oh, hang on a minute. Who the hell are you? I'll keep an eye on those temperatures, especially the oil. <gasps> oh! Ah. Well. Ah, there you go. I was too busy looking at my temperatures. A knot out the window. Damn. Is it now going to unceremoniously quit the mission? Yeah, it is. It doesn't let me stick around to find out what else was going to happen. <sighs> It had to happen eventually, I suppose. Of course, it was a bloody head-on against a, probably a 190 with those with those quad 20 millimeter cannons. You don't want to get in a head-on attack with one of those bastards because they'll do exactly what they just did to me there. Absolutely eviscerated. Didn't stand a chance. Uh, my reflexes just weren't good enough, apparently. It feels bad to be taken out in such a cheap way. And a part of me kind of hoped that if Gaston went down, it would be because, you know, he's being ganged up on by like three Messerschmitts or something, or three or four 190s all, all trying to get him, and eventually one of them would shoot him down. Not in a not in a head-on like that. When we outnumbered the, the enemy, it was just this one lunatic in a 190 who I have to confess I have some admiration for. <laughs> I mean, well done, that man. <laughs> It was just one madman in a 190 against three Spitfires, and he just thought, all right, yeah, I can take him, I reckon. <sighs> oh, I'm sad now. I'm sad. I mean, this, 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 uh, this series was going to have to end this way, one way or the other. I don't think Gaston was going to survive the war. 
I mean, God, imagine how many videos that would be, considering we do about one mission a day on the calendar. That would take forever. Um, crumbs. Well, it would have been nice for him to get his couple of weeks off, though, first, you know. But never mind. I suppose maybe we can chalk that one up to my rustiness, I suppose, a little bit. But actually, the truth is, yeah. It was the Mark 14 that, that fittingly, really, that was what part of what killed me because I was so obsessed with checking the temperature gauges on that temperamental engine that uh, it was obsessively checking said gauges that was actually proved to be my undoing. So there we go. At least it was one of the Bosch that got me. That's all I'll say, I suppose. That's that's the silver lining, I guess. It was. It, at least it was that. At least it was some talented... Um, Sausage muncher in a 190 that got me, and it wasn't me doing something like flying into a tree or uh, crashing on landing or something like that, you know what I mean? Because um, it was something that was in the back of my mind when we embarked on this mission. I was thinking ground attack. You know what? I've not had a lot of practice with ground attack. I'm going to be flying along here trying to drop bombs and strafe tanks. I could easily see myself getting shot down by AAA or by just flying into a telegraph pole or something. I could have totally seen that happening. Um, and that would have been an even more embarrassing way to go. So, yeah. 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 Thus ends the tale of Gaston. He wasn't even captured as a POW. He was just, yeah, took multiple 20 millimeter cannon rounds in the face. At least it was quick. He... I mean, he virtually probably didn't know what hit him. Um, I mean, one second he would have seen that 190 coming towards him and the next, gone. Just gone. Wasn't even a chance to bail out there. Our, our pilot was immediately killed. Um, in fact, I think, I mean, I just, I, I'd have to play back the footage to be sure, but I think what almost, almost actually what happened is I think one of the rounds hit us. I remember seeing our screen go very, very red, like we were seriously injured. And then I think another, within the space of like half a second maybe a quarter of a second, another round hit us, and then that's when the screen went black, and then that's when it flipped to the third-person view as our Spitfire tumbled out of the sky. <sighs> well, you know, there's always the events log. There's the one here, and there's also the one that's in uh, Pat Wilson's campaign area. That would be the interesting one to see, because I want to find out which who got us. That's that's always the fun part of getting shot down like this, I suppose, in Pat Wilson's campaign generators. We get to find out which was the bastard boss that that bashed me um the bastard bosh what buried me down by 190 a8 yeah a8s have some nasty guns on them they have uh i think quad 20 millimeter cannons and a pair of 50 cals in the nose <laughs> so, <laughs> there's not much that could have survived a head-on with that thing you might have even had gun pods installed for all i know which would have meant six 20 millimeters i think oh god yeah, he, he took down another one as well. My God, what a, what a... I mean, you can't help but admire it, really. You have this one... You have four Spitfires tootling along here towards Nijmegen, and there's one gerbin in a 190. He has no backup, no support. It's just this one guy. He's flying along. He sees these four Spitfires. He doesn't have much of an altitude advantage. He just decides, screw it. I'm either going to be a hero or I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory. And he comes in, he downs one of them. Uh, we are, you know, turning around, looking around like headless chickens. Like, well, where's he gone? Where's this guy gone? Where's this guy gone? Then I see him and then zoom, bam, he shoots me down as well. It's a shame, frankly, that the game pauses and, you know, just ends the mission when you die in this game. Because I would have loved to see what happened afterwards, you know. I'd love to see if he got the rest of them or whether they're, whether we were avenged by our squadron mates, but unfortunately it doesn't work like that in this game. But uh, yes, whoever this guy was, he was really good at his job. Flippin' heck, man. <laughs> Magnificent. All right, uh, let's finish this. And uh, we'll go take a look in Pat Wilson's campaign generator. Let's get the detailed breakdown, I suppose. All right, here we go. Continue with claims. Not that we have any to make. Attack enemy arm in the Nijmegen. That turned out to be a very optimistic objective. <laughs> Victory's claim zero. Submit. 
I want to see that debriefing. That's what that's what I'm here for at this point. Did Henri survive? That's what I want to know. I want to know if Henri survived or whether he they, whether or whether the, the bugger got Henri as well because Henri was our other budding ace within the squadron. Okay, let's let's see. Uh, start debrief. Ah, no, it was Hippolyta. Of course it was. I remember that actually saying that in the mission. So, uh, mission events. Not many to speak of. Let's see. A Spitfire Mark 9 of 326 Squadron was brought down by Lieutenant Hildebrand Gutenberg. What a name. That's like, oh, man. Yeah, that's a proper German name with, like, you know, like a at least a dozen syllables. Hildebrand Gutenberg of JG1. Uh, Hippolyta was made a prisoner of war, so he survived at least. Hildebrand Gutenberg was flying a 190A8. Brought down. Yep, he, he killed back Gaston. Gaston was ser wait, seriously wounded. I mean, we were a bit more than seriously wounded. We're dead, as far as I'm concerned. We're dead. I don't. I don't care if PWCG has decided to mark us down as seriously wounded. We're dead. We didn't bail out. We were dead. We were shot in the face, and our Spitfire went into the ground and exploded and left a crater with lots of little bits scattered around it. We're dead. Um, Lieutenant Hildebrand Gutenberg. <laughs> like I said, what a name. <laughs> uh, okay. It's almost like a joke name. That's madness. Anyway. Uh, it's just seriously wounded. It's nonsense, though. We were we were absolutely murdered, dead, killed, dead, 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 dead. Um, nobody would have survived an explosion like that. That's ridiculous. Uh, interesting that it did that. I mean, anyway. Brought down behind enemy lines. Pilot lost. Henri has been brought down. What? What happened there? Ignaz Petit has been killed in action. I guess it simulated the rest of the mission or something? Maybe that's what that's about. Maybe it's a different mission they did or something. So it looks like Henri was taken as a prisoner. Perhaps the rest of the mission didn't go very well either. It looks like maybe, maybe old uh, Hildebrand here... Maybe he shot down the lot of them. So Ignace was killed. That must have, he wasn't on the mission though, was he? I brought Maurice with us. So maybe that was a different mission then, but Ignace is dead. And Henri has at some point been captured. Whether it was on that mission or another one, I don't know. Uh, along with Hippolyta. So, and then Gaston, of course. Has seriously injured in combat with enemy force. He'll be unavailable for an extended period of time. No. 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 I'm sorry. No. Plain last. Yeah. Eugene Nouvion. Next page. <laughs> Posthumously awarded the Distinguished Service Order. Francois has got his DFC. At least we got another medal in the end. Uh, Gaston Bertolo, yeah, we're very much... If he's not dead, he is so mortally wounded, he's not getting back in another aeroplane again for the rest of his life, as far as I'm concerned, but he should be completely dead. Uh, personnel, administer pilots. Do, 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 do. <sighs> Whenever you're ready. Gaston, there is... Add pilot, activate pilot, uh, whatever. Um, PWCG is being very silly. He's dead, as far as I'm concerned. He's absolutely dead. Nobody survives what just happened there. Um, the sim itself definitely thought he was dead, and it wasn't like a nonsense death either, like that, that crash landing. It was like, ah, we're properly dead there. Shot in the face with cannon rounds. Down went said Spitfire, and then kaboom. So, ladies and gentlemen... Um, 
It annoys me that PWCG has now left some shadow of doubt here, but as far as I'm concerned, he's dead, and I'm afraid that does mean the series is concluded, because it was, of course, an Iron Man Dead is Dead campaign. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed our time in 326 Squadron with Gaston Bertolo. Rest his soul. I've had great fun with it, um, and I hope you'll join me again in the future for other playthroughs like this. Um, it's not the most popular series I've ever put on YouTube, I'll admit right now. I don't like to address this in a video itself, but the views weren't great on this. But, you know what, sometimes I, I play games on the channel because I think they deserve playing, and not because I think they'll make lots of views and make the channel grow, and this was one of them. So, those of you who did stick around to the end of this... Thank you for doing so, and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I will do more series like this on the channel uh, in future as well. Uh, not just flight sims as well. Uh, I kind of got my eye on some other things too, like um, some submarine sims like Silent Hunter and Cold Waters and stuff like that that I wouldn't mind having a go at. Um, we'll, probably, we'll definitely do more IL-2 in the future um, with the updated, fancy, flashy new PWCG, or I may just even, you know, have a go at the the the, the native in-game campaign mode, just for a change as well. Um, but I do like PWCG, I have to admit. Uh, let's, let's actually let's, let's go into intelligence, uh, Intel map. Where are JG one base? Let's see if we can find the guy. JG twenty six. JG. JG6. Where's JG1? There they are. Veteran outfit. Call sign is Swift. Stationed at Helmond. Can we find out any more about them than that? Intelligence report. Fight squadrons. JG1. Commanded by Major L Ludwig Heisler. Ludwig. Curse you, Ludwig. Uh. And yes, Hildebrand Gutenberg. He is on staff. He's a lieutenant. I'm not sure what the equivalent rank is in an Allied Air Force, actually. The G German ranks always confuse me. But um, yeah, he's a lieutenant, Hildebrand Gutenberg. He is a member of the squadron. Uh, it'd be nice if I could see stats for these guys, actually. I'd love to know how many kills Hildebrand's actually gotten. Whether, you know, he was an old hand. Or if he's sort of actually just an inexperienced hothead who just <laughs> had a touch of beginner's luck, you know. Um, top aces excludes historical. Is he on there? Uh, there's Gaston on the top with his 17 victories. Ludwig Heisler. I don't see any Gutenbergs here. Nope. Well, anyway, ladies and gents. Uh... That really is it. Thanks for tuning in. I'll join you again in the near future with another Iron Man series of some description. There's other there's other sims I'd like to have a play around with. Um, there is, of course, Flying Circus, which is basically Rise of Flight, but in the IL-2 engine. That's a thing you can get these days. I do have it, um, so we could do some more World War One action if we wanted to. Um, what else? I've been getting a little bit into Strike Fighters 2 lately, which is a Cold War Jets flight sim. Very, very similar to, actually very similar to old IL-2, which you might remember from on the channel from 80 Donkeys years ago, old nine, IL-2 1946. It's very, very similar to that, but it's with Cold War Jets. Um, and that has a really, really, really superb career campaign mode um, as well. Uh, but that's with, you know... Cold War jets firing missiles and, and, and dodging SAMs and all sorts of cool stuff like that. Uh, and also, like likewise, we can go completely back in the other direction and there's World War One again with Flying Circus. We have many options. And there's so many other planes and careers we could do just in IL-2 as well. Like the, 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 the I'm spoiled for choice. Really, I am. I <laughs> It's difficult trying to make a decision. Um, but regardless, I'll make it eventually. And hopefully you'll enjoy whatever it turns out to be. Until then, everybody. Au revoir. A bientôt. Catch you next time.